If you are looking to break into tax sales and change your life financially, this video is for you. The following is a 20 minute interview with Crystal, mother of two. She felt no purpose or ability to be creative in her previous job in healthcare. She learned about tax sales and how it could change the life of her family financially and allow her to work fully remote. It was not an easy road for her, as you will hear. It took her some time to break in, but I think the following ought to serve as inspiration to those of us who are interested in tech sales, who want to break into tech sales, and who are looking to change our lives. Enjoy. I knew that I was passionate about pivoting into tech. I seen people on YouTube. I seen people on Course Careers LinkedIn page every other day pivoting into tech. I seen it like with my own eyes. And not just that, these are people that look like me. These are people that are moms just like me. So it's like if they did it, I know I can do it. So I kept getting interviews after interviews. I kept getting to the third round, but they're saying, hey, you, you're you great. You have a great personality, great outreach, but you don't have sales experience. And I'm like, okay, I know the issue. Uh, <laughs> out of a thousand applicants, I got the job. So yeah, it definitely worked out for me. Crystal, I'm so excited to talk about your story breaking into tech sales in my prep. It looks like you have a lot of fans on LinkedIn and one of your more popular posts was talking about breaking into tech sales can be tough. And there were three strategies you used to make the pivot from healthcare to tech sales, obtain sales experience ASAP, enroll in course careers, and then create an account with Apollo so you could prospect people who could hire you directly. Let's yeah. talk about each one, starting with what were you doing before you got into tax sales? And how did you make that decision? I need a career change. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great question. So I was in healthcare. So I've been in healthcare for like a lot of years. Won't say my age, darling, but I've been in healthcare <laughs> for a while. And, um, I received like two promotions and I denied both of them just because I knew that that was not like my mission. I knew that there was something greater for me and I was pretty bored with just doing different projects. Um, so I started looking into like, hey, how can I make more money? I wasn't making a lot of money. I wasn't passionate about what I was doing. And so I don't know if you've heard of Anthony O'Neill, but I love his show on YouTube. And so I'm always watching his videos and he always talks about like tech, tech, tech. And so I started doing research. I seen an episode where they talked about tech sales and that's when I really started to do research on tech and sales. And that's when I started to kind of transition and pivot and say like, I'm going to leave help here and I'm going to get into tech sales. So that's really where it started. Why was it important for you to want to make more money or want to find greater purpose with your work? Yeah. So I would say that I'm pretty creative. Like naturally I'm a creative person. And so in healthcare, there's not much room for that. Um, so I just, I, I was pretty bored. And then also money wise, like I'm a mom of two, I have two boys that are on the spectrum of autism and I need more money. Who wants to go to the grocery store and then, you know, have to transfer from checkings to savings or savings to checkings. Like nobody wants to do that. And so I'm like, I know that I can make more money and also like use my creativity to challenge myself and do something that is like more valuable and meaning to myself. So that's really where, you know, that came from. And how has now breaking into tech sales impacted those two areas, the money and the creativity? Oh my goodness. <laughs> money and creativity. Okay. So we'll start with money. Cause that's easy, right? Um, let's just say this, I can do what I want and really not have to worry about any of the worries that I used to have, like the money that I make right now, I've never made before, like ever. And I never thought, I'm like, who would have thought I would have had 10K, $10,000 months? Like I, I would have never thought that. So it's it's just amazing. It helps me financially, it helps me personally. Um, on a personal level, I can now, like I used to have a lot of social anxiety and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to pivot into tech because I'm like, I wanna challenge myself. I wanna get over this fear that I have. I wanna push myself. And so now in tech, money wise, but personal, personally, I, I have a career, 
I can proudly say like I work in tech, this is my position, I say it with pride, I feel good about what I do, but I'm also challenging myself personally and then career-wise. There's so much skills and knowledge that I've gained. And then I can actually like walk out and speak to people and have conversations and feel good versus feeling like awkward and <laughs> you know tense and feeling nervous. Now I'm like a social butterfly. So it's definitely helped me personally, career-wise and then financially as well. So it must have been a challenge to start to adopt this mindset or gain these newfound skills it, as part of your, your three steps in your framework. Step one was ob obtain sales skills and knowledge ASAP. How did you start to go about that? Once you decided I need to find work that more aligns with my purpose, I want to make more money. I want to be in tech. How did you actually start to pivot and position yourself to accomplish that? Yeah. So I had, I did a, a program prior to course careers. And so that was not helpful with sales because they didn't focus on sales. They focused on demos, right? So I kept getting interviews after interviews. I kept getting to the third round, but they're saying, Hey, you, you're great. You have a great personality, great outreach, but you don't have sales experience. And I'm like, okay, I know the issue is that I can get interviews. I'm getting them, but I have no sales experience. So for me personally, I knew I needed sales experience. So I decided to step out on faith. I was passionate about pivoting into tech. And so I said, I'm going to get me a sales position, whether it's in tech or not. I just need something to put on my resume, some type of knowledge prior to, to be able to leverage that and push me into tech. And so I went from healthcare and I went out on a limb and I was like, okay, I'm going to work for this research and data firm. And I got some sales knowledge there for maybe like three or four months before I pivoted into tech. So my, my story is a little bit different from others, but I knew that that was the issue because I kept asking, Hey, what, you know, why, why aren't I moving to the next round? And they'd say, Oh, I'm so sorry. You don't have sales experience. So for me, that was that pivot healthcare to, to just any type of sales doesn't matter. Just get me in there. I need that experience. And I, I can't wait to talk later about your outreach strategies for getting interviews and actually progressing forward. I think that knowledge will be really great to speak upon. But can you first talk about what, what was that like getting your, actually in the field and doing the sales stuff for the first time? I'm going to be transparent. It was hard. <laughs> It was hard coming from healthcare and then going to a sales role. I had the confidence, right? But I I didn't have the knowledge yet. So like I had just purchased the Course Careers program, but I didn't actually like go through it. I didn't have all of the info before I got that sales experience. Like it was around the same time that I bought it and got an interview. So I was just like, oh my goodness. Um, it was just... It was hard. It was hard because I, I was not set up with all of the sales terminology. I didn't know what they were talking about in the sales meetings. I didn't know about like churn rate, uh, <laughs> top of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. I didn't know any of that. I knew nothing. So it was it was rough for me, if I'm being completely transparent. It was hard. And what knowledge gaps did Course Careers help fill in? It sounds like the terminology was important, but talk more about that and how investing in your development began to pay off. Yeah. So again, I knew I needed sales experience. So now I'm working with this research and data firm and I have some sales experience, but for me, I still was a little lost in the team meetings. I didn't have the knowledge. I didn't understand prospecting to the mm -hmm. full capability. And so I had, I kept seeing on LinkedIn, I kept seeing on YouTube, course career students every other day pivoting into tech. And I'm like, you know what? I am getting on this. Like I am going to get this, this course. And so when I got it, I, and when I got hired, I bought it before I got hired, but that was like the interview stage. And so once I started the job, that's when I started doing the courses with course careers. And so I learned about churn rate. I learned about top of the funnel. I learned about what a champion is. I learned about prospecting, making cold calls. Those are things that I was doing at that job at the time. And so I'm like, okay, I'm learning all of these things that Course Careers is teaching me. But prior to, I had no knowledge about that. 
So it really helped me with that position to get me to where I am now, which is Intac. How long did it take you to complete course careers? Uh, it took about like four months if I'm being transparent. And that's because like I had just gotten in to a sales job and that alone, like I was working mm. 12 hour days, like it was crazy. Um, but again, that wasn't for a tech company. So a little bit different, but yeah, it took up a lot of my time and then being a mom of two. So it took me four months. How did you find the time between full-time working, full-time motherhood, and then also trying to complete course careers, which is a lot of information. Yeah, I, I focus mainly like on weekends is what I did. And that's why it took me four months versus some people that say they did it in a few weeks. I'm like, with all that info, how <laughs> you must not be a mom or a parent or anything, but <laughs> I don't get it. I'm like, what? It took me a while, but I really sat down and I took notes and I rewinded and I went back. Like I was serious about that info. So um, I just found the time on the weekends. That's really what I did. What were some of your biggest takeaways or notes that may still stick with you? to today? Honestly, I, for me, it was just some of the, the knowledge that was given. So for me, I think some people, when they talk about course careers is like, Oh, when I get in course careers, they're going to get me this job. And it's like, yeah, they have a, a program set up where people can hire their students in there. But like, you really have to take the knowledge that they're giving you and implement that into like your daily life. And so for me, it was the knowledge, the biggest one, which I don't mean to skip above, but you briefly, I mean, if you're not paying attention, you briefly said Apollo. And I'm like, Apollo, what is that? And so that's when I was like, oh, oh, okay. I know how to prospect now and set up sequences. Like mm -hmm. in course careers, you didn't even talk about sequences. At least I don't think you did. But when I did the research after you mentioned Apollo, that's when I was like, okay, yeah, I know how to do all of this prospecting and, and setting things up. So, so yeah. That's, it's a, such a powerful insight you just shared of taking responsibility for your actions and your results, not sitting back waiting for someone to do it for you or waiting for it to come to you. I think that's a misconception some current course career students have and future ones will is, okay, I've invested the course, I'm learning when are you going to give me a job? And it, it doesn't, it doesn't happen like that for the majority of people. It's learning the information, seeing other people, believing you can do it too. And then actually taking proactive steps, identifying companies, reaching out to people at those companies that can influence your process, getting interviews and then eventually offers. So let's now talk about your process post completing course careers. You start to learn about sequencing, prospecting, you got the terminology. How did you go about finding companies you wanted to work for? How many did you, did you apply to? Just, just walk us through post-course careers, what you did from there. Yeah. So post-course careers, I did things so much more differently. I felt so much more prepared. And it was almost like I was laser focused. Like, like I wasn't focused on everything anymore. It was just like, okay. So what I did post-course careers is I had like a sheet, like a Google Doc or an Excel spreadsheet. And I focused on 10 companies every two weeks. That's mm. what I did. Only my top 10 companies that I, I knew I wanted to work for. And this means I'm focusing on, are they remote? Because, you know, I'm a mom of two. I haven't been in the office in six years, never going back again. Are they remote? How much are they paying? What are their responsibilities? Is it a small company or is it an enterprise company? I knew I didn't want to work for an enterprise company. I want to work with a smaller startup. So I focused on that. And like one of the biggest things I focused on was what are they selling? I think a lot of people just want to pivot into tech. But if you don't have much sales experience, you need to be Focus on what you're selling, because if you don't like what you're selling, if you find what you're selling is boring, you're going to get tired of working there. So for me, it was important to focus on that, those top 10 companies, but I also really need to believe in what I would be selling at that company. So that was like one of the first methods I did is focus on those 10 companies every two weeks in Apollo, setting up that sequence, emails, LinkedIn messages, and then even phone calls as well. So it sounds like you identified the segment of company you'd want to work for a bit smaller, more startup ask offers fully remote and you care about the product they're selling. And I'm sure you researched, well, what are the buyer persona they sell to or the industry they're selling into? And these are all considerations because that's another issue. I know a lot of people have is, 
well, what companies should I look for? And I think that framework is a great way of thinking about it. 10 companies every two weeks and being focused rather than just completely spraying and praying. Yeah. Once you identified these companies, how did you get people's attention in these companies? Did you just apply and wait? What did you do to get interviews? So I'll say, I'll give you two examples. So one example is I was never a fan of cover letters, but for this one company, <laughs> I, I'm not a fan of cover letters. I can't lie. If I see a cover letter, I'm like, ah, oh, okay, I don't want to do it. But there was this one company that I wanted to work for and they required a cover letter. So what I did was I took their logo again. I'm, I'm very creative. I like to do like digital art. I like to sketch. I like to sew. So I took their logo and I put it on the cover letter and I was writing as if I already worked for them. And the recruiter sent it over to the sales manager and I got an interview just based off of that alone. They were like, I love your creativity. Like, I love that. Um, so that was one of the things that I did. I, I will talk about my, my current company, what I did to get there because I, I don't post much on LinkedIn, so I'll just share it here. Um, so the first thing that I did was when I seen that this is a company that I wanted to work for, it hit all the marks. Um, my CEO had a webinar that he was doing and, you know, it was open to the public right on LinkedIn. It was posted and you could join. So I, I had applied for the job. I don't know if I applied for the job yet. I, I, yeah, I, I applied for the job. I seen that he had a webinar. And so I went and registered for the webinar. Now, you know, when you go to the company page and you go to the job post, you can see all of your connections. And like at the time, there was like 1,000 of your connections that are following this page. That means that 1,000 of those people applied for the job. That's that's what I'm assuming, right? Um, so the job posting had like over 1,000 applicants at the time. And I was like, I need to figure out how I'm going to stand out. So I registered for the webinar. I joined the webinar. I did some research on the company prior to, I was commenting in the webinar, you know, uh, then after I commented on their company page and their post, And I was like, Hey, I loved, you know, what you guys are offering. I love how you guys are different. Like the comment is still on there from like a year ago before I started. And so I did that. And then I emailed the CEO and was like, Hey, I loved your webinar. And I just wanted to stand out so you can start seeing my name, Crystal Latrice, Crystal Latrice, Crystal Latrice. And then that's when I sent him an email. And I was like, I think the subject was looking for I don't know, something sales engineer or something like that. I, I made the subject line very catchy. And like the next day I had an interview with them. So like, you got to stand out. You got to do different things. Webinars, posting on the company page, focusing on 10 companies at a time. So those are a few things that I did to kind of stand out. So if I'm hearing you correctly, you didn't just immediately go into what can you do for me? Transactional. Give me an interview. I want the job. You liked and commented on the post. You showed up to the webinar, you engaged, you led with value. Mm -hmm. And then when you made that ask to the CEO looking for interview job, whatever, he probably recognized your name and liked the approach and said, okay, this makes sense. And, and it was a lot more seamless and you set yourself up rather than just going in saying, what can you do for me? That is super powerful. And it sounds like it worked out really well. Yeah, I did. I got the job. <laughs> <laughs> out of a thousand applicants, I got the job. So yeah, it definitely worked out for me. Yeah, you did something right. Talk about the job today. How is your day-to-day -day life and career different than what you were used to in the past with health healthcare now being able to work from home and, and actually being in tech? Reflect on it. Yeah, so I actually was working from home way before COVID. Um, but uh, how is it different? So I'm no longer bored in healthcare, right? <laughs> like it's a challenge for me. I would say like I've gained so many skills and I have so much more knowledge about marketing and sales together. It's just crazy. One thing I have to say though, doing course careers, you know, when you first start the program, you guys give us like the maybe 50 to 100 uh, words to kind of memorize, right? Mm -hmm. And so when I'm going through that, I'm like, why are we learning about marketing? Like, I, like there was ABM in there, there, there was different like marketing words. I'm like, why are we learning about marketing, but we're sales. And what's crazy is I work for a marketing technology platform right now. And you guys were teaching me marketing, like ABM. I work for an ABM platform and I'm like, what? 
Like how did Course Careers set me up with these words and then I worked for an ABM marketing platform? That was just crazy to me. Um, but yeah, so the skills, the knowledge, working from home, but not just working from home, working from home, making so much more money, right? Um, and then, you know, I got promoted. So I do so many different things. When you work for a startup versus enterprise, enterprise, like you might just do that one specific job. For me, I'm like, I do demos, I send out proposals, I close deals, I manage relationships. I'm, I'm kind of like the customer success manager for the marketing agencies. So I do so many different positions kind of in one. And for me, I love that because it keeps me on my toes. I'm always learning. And then I'm just gaining all of this knowledge and all of these skills where before I was just completely bored. I was like, yeah, <laughs> I am over this. So yeah, definitely changed a lot. What advice would you have for someone that's currently in course careers today and, and is maybe in that one or two month in of month four, like you, of, of, of they're just trying to get through it, they're, they're sort of undecided, or maybe they've decided they want to get into tech, but have not signed up for course careers. What advice would you have for that person that's looking for a change? Yeah. So for me, I would say like the, the reason why I kept going and I was like, I'm not giving up is because I knew that I was passionate about pivoting into tech. I seen people on YouTube, I seen people on Course Careers LinkedIn page every other day pivoting into tech. I seen it like with my own eyes. And not just that, these are people that look like me. These are people that are moms just like me. So it's like, if they did it, I know I can do it. And I knew that I could do it. And I had the drive. I had the passion. I just wasn't giving up. So for someone who is saying, hmm, I see that Course Careers is really like getting these students into tech, but you haven't paid for it. You have to be passionate about it. But also like it is completely life changing. I'm sorry, but you're not making the money anywhere else in any, any other industry than tech. And like Course Careers is the most cost effective, you get to learn on your own. It's not packed with fluff, because I'm telling you, <laughs> some of these tech programs are packed with fluff, I know. And you just go straight into all of the details. There's no waiting, you get straight to it. It's like for the amount of money, the amount of time that you put into it, why would you not? I always say the two biggest investments and best investments that I ever made was one therapy, love therapy, will never be without therapy, Two is course careers, because without course careers, I would not be in the position I am in now. So yeah, that's, that's my answer there. You well, need you passion, <laughs> you need passion and like, just do it. Don't give up. Keep going. If you really want to pivot into tech, just keep going. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. When you feel down, just keep going. Cause when you, when you pause or when you stop, you're going to fail. You're like, you're failing yourself. There's no one holding you back but you. So you just got to do it. And you did it, Crystal. I think you're a testament to that. And your, yeah. your words at the end here have me fired up. I'm ready to make some calls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank so, you. 